Yo guys, how's it going, Mad Gas? Yeah, in this video, it was a kind of unexpected kind of tutorial video I'm doing for you guys. I wasn't expecting to do a tutorial, well, I wasn't planning on doing a tutorial video anytime this week, maybe at the weekend. I am going to be hopefully uploading another video again tonight, the end of tonight, showing a little bit more of my map Devil's Recess if I get around to adding more things. But this video is kind of me expressing my feelings about the whole entire mod tools and maps that are released at the minute in the mod tools workshop now a lot of you guys know that mod tools have been out now for a few weeks so i'm not expecting everybody to be posting insanely awesome detailed maps and creative goodness to the workshop but for god's sake guys stop posting box maps i'm sick to death of seeing a box map on to the workshop and people are downloading playing it and it's just it's just a box map it's boring a box map is simply what i've got right now in front of me i've got a window i've got a magic box spawn i've got a wall by i've got a couple of perk machines and the power switch and the packer punch i can release this to the workshop and that would be a box map just stop doing it so what i'm going to do now is show you guys how you can make simple areas like this what i've got now turn them into lovely detailed spaces that will make things look so much better and it's so easy to add detail i heard somebody say detail is the easiest part of a map no that that is false that is lies it can be easy but it's time consuming details are what make a map pop and make it realistically so do not skimp on details you gotta look around your real life situations and stuff look at your house look at your door frames look at your floorboards look at the ceilings and stuff in your house and get inspiration from that so with this under our belts and in our imagination i'm going to show you some cool simple tricks and tips and show you how to make awesome looking details in your map pretty pretty simple so first off let's say you're building an outdoor area and you want to build a nice wall so what i'm going to do is simply just grab in our brick worn dirty texture over there now if you followed a few of my tutorials before you will know how easy it is to draw out blocks and stuff like that so simply all i'm going to do now is draw out a flat wall granted that is massive 64 so i'm going to drop down the grid view we'll put that at say 16 and put that into there and we have what looks like a standard brick wall now i'm going to go down into this other view and resize that to about there so we have that kind of view there now if you're worried about like what this is going to look in game you can bring up an act i'll show you that so we'll double click on our texture and we'll paste that into there so if we go over to this part and right click go down to models and usually the first one at the top there should be the model actor. So you can kind of get a default character, like a size. So you can get a size ratio of how your rooms are going to look and stuff like that. So we're going to say that is a fair decent size wall. We will use that. Now what I'm going to do now is select that, go into the top down view. And if you press space bar, you make an instant copy of that map. Now I'm going to use the rotational tool up here, which press Z, rotate that. And I'm going to put this there. So we have this little corner area I'm going to work on now to detail this up. Now, a lot of people would release this as a map. Say, this is your outside area there, your bounding boxes. That is your outside wall. Now, that looks boring. That is boring as hell as a wall can be. It really, really is. Now, I'm going to just show you some simple techniques to detail this up and make it look just that little bit better. Now, when have you ever seen a wall that is just straight, flat, boring like that with boring texture and stuff? Right, so what we're going to do now using just the top down view once again i'm just going to simply drag over another block like that and put that down into the side view drag it up and put that there now you see we've got a nice block on that wall there really really simple so what we're going to do now is just simply copy that with the space bar once again and just put a space see if you put that there it will make it look like kind of like a castle but we don't want to go for a castle kind of view we're going to go put that somewhere like that copy that again and put it into there like so and then simply grab all those three by holding in shift and clicking with your mouse. And we're going to press space bar to duplicate them. Rotate them with the Z rotation and drag them into position right there. And for some reason that has seemed to have moved all over the other side of the road. You silly, silly sausage. Right. And we just drag him back into a position like so. And there you go. The wall now is starting to look a little bit more like an actual wall. Now we need to detail it up. So what I would do, I like to do is add in extras to this part here. So this part of the wall would need extras. So for that, I'm going to reduce the grid size down to maybe a nice grid too. And draw out a patchwork like so. Well, not a patchwork. It's a brush. We're drawing out a simple brush like that. Size is too big. So change our size view. Drag that down to about one. You don't need to copy all this exact, but that's kind of where I want to go for it. And that's fine. But what I'm going to select now is a nice concrete texture. So we go for concrete and all uh let's just pick up a simple one concrete worn weathered cracks 
Yep, that looks pretty cool in there. That'll do. And all I'm going to do now is simply go back into the top-down view and copy that and paste that into there. And as you see, the size is all off, so we just resize it. Because not all walls are identical in size. It's, a a bricklayer does not make walls identical unless he's working for a contract and company and getting paid thousands. Anyway, so whatever. We've got that, and then we just simply do the same again to that. That one should be the same as that. Copy and paste that into there. And then this one, once again, is smaller, so we resize it. And as you can see now, the wall is starting to take shape and look a lot better. Now, a lot of you people are thinking, well, that's not very, very detailed, guys. This is basic detailing, guys. This is basic detailing. It really, really is. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select this one and this one. And in our view mode, we're going to find the front of that. So the front of that, to me, I'm going to say is this side here. So I want to find this in the view mode. There we go. Just like so. And when I press... This is going to like, I'm sorry, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut off the edges of that to give it a little bit more definition. So to do this, we press X on our keyboard and we can use a cutting tool to cut corners. So what I'm going to do is reduce the grid one more time to grid one. That brings up this lovely piece of part, like a lovely, lovely detail, right? So now we press X on our keyboard, click where you want it to cut and click where you want it to end. Right there, you see the line draws across and in our 3D view, sorry, you see a little line going down there. And all to do to clip that is press shift and enter. Boom. That's that side done. And now we go across to here and do the same again. Click, click, shift and enter, boom. Done, like so. And then we can go into our 3D view, select these edges that we've just clipped off of these bits of walls like that, and remove them. Now we have a nice chamfered edge of kind of concrete sitting on top of that wall, like so. I'm gonna do the same with this side, like that. Shift and care, sorry, control and tab to change views till you find it in the view mode, like so. Press X again, boom, like that, boom. Like that. Oh, like that. And shift and Whoop, I didn't press shift and enter. Remember to press shift and enter when you do this. Shift and enter. And there we go. And then to do this quicker, you can just quickly simply select on the ones you don't want, then it should already have them selected. Backspace. And we have those lovely little areas now on top of our wall. Now, if you want to even add extra detail into this, what I like to do is maybe add some, say, barbed wire at the top of this wall and give it a nice, like, Kind of this you shouldn't really be in here type stuff so we're going to search for something in here um if you type into the models fence we may find a fence post now there's a lot of fences you can use in here as a model but it's not always beneficial just to copy models from the entirety of radiant because then it kind of gets a bit redundant and people are thinking well you just copied that from another map believe me i've had that happen to me many a times so we're going to use this a metal chain link base and all i'm going to do is just drag that into our map like so change the view panel we want it on top of our press x again if you're still in cutting mode i'm going to put this about there on top of our wall zoom in and drag it up to there so now we have this metal base where we can actually add in some kind of fence so for the sake of it i'm just going to copy that one more time and paste that into there like so and we just center him up like that and what I'm going to do now is add in some metal bars that we can add in to add some maybe barbed wire into this. So simply what we're going to do now is find a lovely rusted metal texture. So we go down into our textures, select rust, and we can just scroll through until we find one that we really, really like. There's a few that I usually use. Try not to find the ones that say a reveal on it, otherwise that will not work, or blend plus. So this one here, a simple paint rust white. So lit plus will do fine. And in your top down view of this, we're going to go to our first little footstool here and simply draw out a box that kind of fills that area so we can change it down again grid size just to get that in nice and tight like that and remember what i was showing you from the arch video when you're making cylinders whatever view you're looking at in the top down view sorry in the xy view will be the like direction and the flatness and the scale and the shape which it will make when you change it up in your primitives or in your patch tool so what i'm going to do is resize that there and like i say go down at the top down view of that and we're going to go to patch primitives and turn this into a cylinder now as you see it just chopped off those edges and it didn't really look like a cylinder at all but if you press shift and bracket you see there it has now rounded off and we have what looks like a pole sticking into that that's simple so what i'm going to do that is just copy that with selecting it in spacebar drag that across to this side easy as that and there we go we have that there now so now we're going to go on top so literally select that one more time spacebar to copy this and simply rotate 
and drag this into a different view like so we can see our bar there and we're going to put this half and half so it blends in nicely go to your side view so you can see this working I was already in the side view drag that to where you need it to be and drag this across to your desired destination like so and there you have it we have what looks to be a nice fence like kind of working out now so we can actually detail out a little bit easier if we smooth that in and stuff like that. Just play around with different things like that. Now what I'm going to do now is, once again, copy this and drag that down to about there. Now you see, it looks a lot better than just a plain wall and just tiny little details like this. You don't have to go too exaggerate on details, but just make things look a little bit more realistic than you already have done. So with that done like that, we will go now into our models and select barbed wire so we get a barbed wire fence there's a few different barbed wire fences to choose from i'm going to use this lovely circular one like so drag that into our model and drag that up to sit into there and there we go you can move that across maybe across to there like that and add another one in there add more into there go around and round as you wish put that into game mode and you'll see now that that wall looks like a pretty cool wall now to add up more things into this what I'm going to do is change the faces on these. So with when you press shift and click on that block, it selects all the block altogether. But if you press control and shift, it will just select a face. Now we want to just put some concrete top onto that. So to make it look like it's an actual concrete, we'll just go with the first one that's on the list. And there we go. Now you see guys, that looks so much better than what it would look if it was just a blank wall. You can even add in some decals if you really want. So you can go into your entity browser, search decal, volume decal, drag that across like that now we're making decals what you want to remember is this red arrow has always got a face the outward direction or towards where your camera is looking so we're going to rotate on the blue axis here which is the z axis to make this one spin around facing us so we press that rotate you see now it's facing the other way so you see the writing is backwards one more time to bring it around to like that and then we can go into select maybe a lovely grind texture so we select a lovely grime texture like so see what we got well nope that didn't work maybe a dirt texture you can get some lovely dirt textures in here but the best one i like to use is grunge we get loads of cool grunge textures onto this so what i'm going to use now i'll just find a pretty cool and let's see what we got through grunge you can obviously choose anything you want you could do this by using patches but i find it you works easier on this so we can use a leakage we can do a leakage decal you can't really see it on there but trust me little things like this make a massive impact in game so let's say we'll go with this one it's a rust decal i know the wall's not rusty in fact no we'll not go with rust we don't want rust let's see what we got let's see if we can get this one here we will take this one now you think oh well that looks really bad that doesn't look like a wall would rust like that so what you want to do is press s on your keyboard to bring up your surface inspector hit both and there you go it has changed so now you can grab these handles at the side and move it into its position where you want it to be push it up to underneath where it would actually be dripping down resize it once again like so spiggity bow spiggity boo and you have added some decals to this now always resize these with the different things and move them up to match different areas and you get the kind of gist of the area like and the way it's going to look once you add more and more decals into this you could even draw more like mesh barriers into there so we'll do that now we'll just go back to rust and find our texture we've got in use which is this one here you can simply just go in to this we can draw on to the sides of the brickwork like so and resize that up like there bring it down a touch so it's on top of there all this is just working from the side view and the 3D view so you can see what you're doing. Now we have that there which is a lovely, lovely panel. It looks it looks bland as hell. But we can resize that. See, we put that into there like so. Like that. Space bar to copy it. Reline it back up into that screen. Drag it across to the other, men uh, other side of the wall. Like so. And there we go. We have some panels there. And what we can do now is find a nice... Uh, maybe like a chain link fence a chain link texture like so and you can use any of these textures and they'll look pretty cool so we're just going to select chain link metal worn and then i'm going to go drag over this with a new brush and it is really this simple guys it really is nothing to creating brushes on this like kind of radiant tool it really really is really really easy and it's pretty cool how you can make 
something so little and seem insignificant to people who are going to play your map look even awesome. And now we go there, boom, we've put that in there. So we now have a barbed wire bit, we have a chain link fence, a bit of grime on the wall. You can change that up a bit if you want. And that is how you do detail, guys. Put that into game mode and you've got to admit that that looks pretty cool. Now what you can do to make things look really, really cool, this is just to show you like a bit extras. If you go into the effects browser by right clicking and you have so many different things. So we are going to maybe just select a quick fire. We'll select the fire barrel like that, like so. And we just put him on the floor like that, drag him out to where he needs to be. Nothing spectacular happening there. Obviously, I was just doing this for a demonstration purposes. So we're going on to light and then we see what kind of fire do we want. We want this one here. Oh, we select the wrong one. Put him in there like so. Drag him to where the flame's burning. You have a nice fire burning there now. And look at that fence. That looks so much better than just what a blank wall would be. Now to detail it up even further, you can go ahead and add a patch into the floor area. So we'll do that quickly now, bring it out of game mode. I'll just move these a little bit across. And what I'm gonna do is add a simple patch to this floor to give it that little depth of feel. So it actually looks like the wall is actually part of the floor and it's not just sort of just stuck there. Cause if you go outside and look at a wall, you will just not see it planted into the floor like so. So I'm just gonna draw a nice simple box there. And as before, Top down view selected, go to patch, terrain. Now I like to select a good value for this. So width, we're gonna go 10, uh, maybe 30 on this one. And depending how you've done it, that's worked out wrong for me, you see, because I had the width of the thing backwards. So go undo that, and we just go back to patch, terrain, simple terrain, and select the width to 30. I don't know why I didn't realize that was the width. But these are things you learn through doing and trial and error, guys. Width 30, and there we go, we have our patch. Now we don't want that there, but we want some concrete and we want a nice concrete blend and we're just going to scroll down and i like to select this one here and that one there is a simple good concrete blend now if we drag this down to about there one brick high press y on your keyboard to bring up your advanced patch editing options and what we need to do now is reshape this to make it look like concrete is built up around the wall so we need to select this axis which is z and we are going to paint the height we're not flattening anything we are painting the height so we want to select paint height and height down here and these things change the outer radius and inner radius of your circle so we're going to change it to that and this changes the amplitude which is the strength of which it moves the vertices so when you've selected all this and you've got the right size press alt on your keyboard hold that down and with your right mouse button you can drag across this surface and it will resize things but we don't want to resize things like that we want to bring things down to the floor so we're just going to go if you hold alt and right click on your mouse sorry if i said left click before but this is right click on your mouse and just bring things down to another level like so and you can do that all the way along until you have a nice looking patch that resembles concrete in the wall and once you're happy with it and it kind of looks something like you would see outside your house simply just press escape and you see we now have a concrete bevel uh, sorry yeah a concrete blend patch on there obviously you can spend a little bit more time than i did on this to make it look a little more better so we go back into game mode into that and now tell me that that does not look cool anymore so if we close down some of these menus you can see this a little bit brighter a little bit better and that is simply done within the space of a few minutes just messing around with some patches and some brushworks to change from what would literally be this wall over here so we'll just rotate this round so a basic flat wall like that in your map to something like that which takes mere minutes to achieve and it looks pretty cool and people who play your map will be like more forgiven and more understanding if other areas are lacking detail if you put little details like this and to make things look cool it took nothing at all to detail up a blank wall like that into something usable for game use so there you go guys there is no excuse for lack of detail in maps there's no need for making box maps and if you do make a box map it's got to be hyper detailed to attract my attention i may play it on my channel i may not but there you go guys a small tutorial showing you how to detail up areas really really simple really really easy you can also go around adding archways to doorways like we showed in the previous video. But yeah, lights as well add in so much detail. Don't just plonk a light without an actual light shade as well. There's lots of more tutorials out there on the internet. Go search for them. Don't make things so boring and basic with box maps and bland single textures. Detail it up, add features, add brushes, add patchwork, entities and lights, and it will look 
awesome. So there you go, guys. Hope you did enjoy this. If you did, hit that like button, comment down below what you think. And if you are new at the channel, please subscribe for more daily Black Ops 3 custom zombies content. And as always, continue to dropkick your grandma.